Welcome back to Spoil Rotten Beads. I am Juliet and you're joining me for another Beads and Banter Live where we are going to talk tassels today. Um, I am wearing some tassel earrings here and I'm going to talk you through um, about three different ways to make tassels, um, a couple of different techniques, how to use different findings to make your tassels, what to do when or why tassels go wrong sometimes. Um, I'm going to show you um, how to make a little tassely um, Book, uh, bookmark or keyring or bag charm like this one here which is made using a little uh, cup finding which has got kind of a hole on both ends. Um, in a minute I'm going to toggle my camera so you can see my bead mat. Um, just fire away with your questions and I'll do my best to answer them as I go along. Um, so I'm just going to reduce down the size of my camera here so you can see my bead mat and then we can um, get started at making these lovely tassels. So I'm gonna talk you through all the components I've got and show you first of all how to make like the tassel earrings that I'm wearing. Um, so let me just bring those up to the camera so you guys can take a look at that, let the camera focus in there. Um, oh, hello everyone, you're actually there and live. I didn't know you were, that's really cool. Um, <laughs> we're a little bit early, aren't we? Um, I wasn't sure that it was actually working. So yay, and I can see everyone's comments. That's really cool. Um, so we're starting a bit early today. <laughs> I thought that we weren't quite online yet, but we are. Um, and you can see my bead mat, um, and I can see you, Donna. Hi, Donna. Hi, Carol. Hi, Rachel. Hi, Nancy. Hi, Evelyn. Hey, this is working. Brilliant. Um, so I'm just gonna pop my little tassel earrings here let you guys focus in on them and show you guys um, the blue one that I made earlier and I've got a nice little handy tip um, that I'm going to enjoy showing you guys um, how to use um, and then I'm going to talk about this kind of tassel here which is made um, using one of these caps um, which has got um, a hole all the way through the middle and then after that, I'm going to show you guys how to use this kind of cap, which has not got a hole in it. Um, and you're just going to glue in that tassel that you're going to make. And I'm just going to show you how to create a nice, um, a nice uh, end for your tassel ready to glue into a finding like this. So let me just pop all this to one side, I'll answer a few of your questions. Hi, Charlotte. Oh, oh flu jabs. Oh, good to get them there, isn't it, at the moment? Hi, Evelyn. Hi, yay. <laughs> I didn't actually, I have to confess, I didn't actually mean to do it early. Um, I was just doing a little test and then suddenly you were all there. <laughs> so I'm like, okay, that test worked then. <laughs> um, I finally got my tech sorted now so you can see my mat at the same time as, um, as my face, which is brilliant. Um, so first of all, we're gonna make a tassel like this blue one and we're gonna do it using this large bead here and um, and a closed jump ring. Um, so I've got six millimeter um, closed jump ring here. Um, and then one of these like flying saucer beads here, which have got quite a big hole. Um, I'll just let the fo camera focus in on it too. Um, oh, Joy says, can we do the Camille bracelet? I'll take a look at that and see if we can do that um, at a beads and banter. I can't remember which one that is, Joy, um, but I'll take a look. Um, and these are size 11 seed beads I've got here in three different colours so that I can create this kind of ombre effect here. And then um, I've got three millimetre Swarovski crystal bicones. And the thread that I'm going to be using today is Eslon D. You want to use Eslon D. Um, oh, the playback's better. It is so much better. Um, it's so much better than it was, isn't it? I think I finally managed to get my tech sorted, Donna. So this is Eslon D, and I recommend that you use Eslon D with the tassels because the Eslon D is nice and soft and flexible and you want it to move. You want your tassel to have lots of nice movement there. Um, and it won't have if you use a stiff thread like Fireline. This is a tassel that went wrong that looks a bit like a spider and it was made using Fireline thread and it's far too, far too stiff. Um, so that's a reason for not using Fireline. I'll talk about what else went wrong with this tassel a little bit later on. 
But first thing first, I want to get started um, with these um, big hole beads. And I'm going to show you a little tip um, that you can use. It's going to make your life so much easier um, when you um, when you when you make a tassel with a large hole bead like this. What you need to do is take some masking tape, well, we call it masking tape or decorator's tape in the UK here. I don't know what you guys call it in America. Um, you've lost me on Facebook apparently, someone said. Uh, hopefully I'm back on Facebook. What you wanna do is pop your um, large hole bead, this is the sticky side of my tape, and pop your large hole bead in that tape and wrap it over so that um, your bead is in between the sticky sheet like that okay and you'll see why I've done this in just a minute the next thing you need to do is take your needle and thread it up with your Eslon D thread um, and um, I've already done that here and I'm going to go down towards my end of my thread here and take one of my six mil closed jump rings and pop the tail of my thread through that jump ring and knot it on. So I'm knotting my thread onto my jump ring. I'm gonna tie a double knot here. There we go. Like that. So I've tied a double knot to knot my Eslon D thread um, onto my um, onto my jump ring. And now I'm going to take my needle and sew through that bead through the tape. And you'll end up with something that looks like that there. You can see my bead in the middle there. I've managed to get some beads stuck to my tape. I don't need those, so I'm just going to rip off the sticky side of my tape so that it just looks like this. And what this tape is going to do is it's going to make sure that you don't pull your tassel as you make it up through into that bead. Um, so later on, when you've made your tassel, you can just, um, yeah, you call it masking tape in the USA, Claire says, um, you can, um, yeah, you can just remove the tape and you'll get a really nice neat tassel and you'll find it so much less fiddly um, than you would have done if you didn't have the tape there. So now it's just a question of threading on the, the beads. And with this one here, I threaded on 10 of each colour of seed bead followed by um, a three mil bicone at the bottom. So I'm gonna pick up 10 seed beads. And I just wiped off my needle there with my finger because when I went through the tape, um, I would have picked up a little bit of glue and it just makes it a bit easier if you just wipe off that glue um, with your fingers before you start threading your beads. So I need 10 now, so it's two, four, two, four, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. So that's 10 of my darker color. And then I've got this lovely Turkish blue. I'm going to have 10 of those two. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine, ten. Nope. There we go. And then this last colour here, again, I need 10 of this. So it's four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10. There we go. Um, so there's my seed beads on. I'm now going to just going to pick up my 3 mil. And let me just tidy up my workstation. I am such a messy worker. If I tidy up my workstation, you guys will have a better chance of seeing what I'm doing, won't you? <laughs> there you go. Hi, Wendy. Um, so I've got my three mil crystal on now and what I'm going to do is sew back through all of those beads but I'm going to miss out that three mil crystal. So I'm just going through the seed beads now. I'm going to pull this tight. So, and I need to go through these last nine of these darker colour here. So I'm now through all the seed beads 
and I'm going to go back up through that masking tape, back up to where that jump ring is. And then go through the jump ring and down through the tape again. So I'm going through that jump ring and down through the tape again. Get my camera to focus in on that for you. Okay, and I'm now ready for my next tassel. Here's a lovely Turkish blue, isn't it? That Toho, it's a gorgeous colour, Donna. Really pretty. So what this tape is doing is it, it mean, means that your beads don't try and slip up inside the hole on that large hole bead and it just keeps everything really neat. It's a really nice trick and it just makes your life so much easier. Otherwise you're fighting, at least to begin with, to try and keep the beads out of that large hole there. Um, so to make these earrings, I have done a total of seven tassels here so seven tassels and I did that for my pink ones as well that I made to go with my dress um, but I just did a little different pattern so the pink ones are just completely random um, whereas the blue ones we've got that ombre effect hi Lois how are you um, so I'm gonna do another one for you here so every time you go in and out of that masking tape, you just it's worth just wiping your needle with your fingertips so that you don't um, get stickiness everywhere. So that's four, five, six, seven, two, four, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten of this colour. And then onto that nice Turkish blue that we all love. The other thing that, that masking tape does is it stops you from pulling everything too tight because if you pull everything too tight when you're making a tassel, then again, it's going to be really stiff and it's not going to um, hang nicely. So this masking tape trick that I've just shown you um, really helps with that as well. So it helps with the tension, keeping it right. Um, Otherwise, because you, you don't want it to be all stiff, you want that tassel to have lots of movement in it. If you miss this tip, if you're just coming um, along to this um, now, then just you can watch on the playback and you can see um, how we're using this masking tape um, to make these tassels here. So again, I'm just going to miss out all of the miss out the the crystal and just go through those seed beads there and pull tight. Thank you, Lois. Now, I'm a bit early, actually, Cheryl. I'm a bit early for beads and banter today um, because I thought I was testing my equipment. <laughs> I wasn't. I was live, so I was like, okay. Uh, just get through those last couple of beads. Right, so I've gone through all of the seed beads again, and I'm back up through the masking tape and that... Um, big whole bead and then you go through through the jump ring and back down through the tape again it really is a good trip trip this trick this masking tape it makes it so much quicker and easier using um, I'm using this one here is the um, galvanized Turkish blue Toho size 11 this one is Toho Galvanized Peacock Blue. And then the darker blue here is an, um, Toho. Um, yeah, yeah, always watch on the playback. Um, and then, hi, Carol. Um, I didn't realize I was live, but I was lucky I was not saying anything naughty, hey? <laughs> Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So if you're just catching up and you're watching me on the playback, um, you're just you're just joining us. We're doing tassels today, and I'm showing you guys at the moment how to make these um, lovely um, Turkish blue um, tassel earrings. Um, and I've shown you at the beginning of the video a nice little tip um, for using masking tape that makes your life a lot easier. So if you missed that, you can watch that on the catch up on the playback. Then we're gonna talk about this kind of tassel, which uses a different technique um, that I've used um, 
uh, I've finished it with a nice sparkly Swarovski crystal and we've used one of our new candy apple um, Preciosa bead mix there which is really pretty and colourful and then I am just going to show you at the end as well um, how to use um, a closed cap like this to make a tassel too um, so that you've got um, so that you've got all the options there and hopefully you guys have got some of these findings at home and you'll be able to have a play um, so um, keep chatting away as I keep beading um, I'm not going to finish this tassel, I don't think, unless you all want me to, but I think I want to make sure we have enough time to show you the other techniques as well. Um, seven, eight, nine, ten. I can't talk and count at the same time. It's not good, is it? crystal hi Denise oh yeah get it get back into it again it sounds like we're all going to be at home again for a while doesn't it so um time to dig out all the crafts I think now especially with the weather turning here Um, you just need minimal equipment to make these tassels as well. That's a, that's a nice thing about them. And of course, I'm using mine for earrings, but they make really cute little arms and uh, bookmarks. Um, there's loads you can do with them. Put them on your key rings. So I'm going back up through that masking tape again. And you can see it's just keeping everything neat this end here. Back through the jump ring and down through the masking tape again. It just it just makes everything so much easier that little masking tape trick. I just I was I was puzzling about how to do it do it last night because I'd made my pink earrings and I had really struggled with getting them all lined up on the hole and then it just suddenly came to me masking tape is the answer and I gave it a go and it worked. So do Toho do those colours in the six? They might do Donna. Yeah, I'm not sure. Um, Sometimes with some Toho colours, we have difficulty getting hold of um, them in in all the sizes, or there'll be one, they won't all be in stock at the same time, which is very frustrating sometimes. Um, two, four, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. But if there's ever a colour that you're after, just shout and we'll do our best to get it in for you. Peacock blue now. Ten. We'll check I've got ten there. Two, four, six, and ten. I do. Oh, hi Susan. When's your daughter getting married? Soon, I hope. They've just changed the rules here that you're only allowed, I think, fifteen for a wedding now. Um. So I'm going back up, I've put my crystal, I'm going back up through all of the beads. I'm pulling it tight as I go and I don't need to worry about my tension because of this little piece of masking tape. It's stopping me from pulling everything too tight. So it is a really nice, um, it does make it nice gear. And you just keep going until you've got seven of these tassels. And when you've got seven of these tassels, you need to finish off your thread by just knotting it. And when you've got seven of these tassels, you need to finish off your thread by just knotting it around that jump ring there. Just knotting it around. I recommend that you glue your knot with a little bit of hypo cement. Oh, she got married on Saturday. Thank goodness <laughs> she got in there just in time, Susan. Um, then you just want to glue that knot with your hypo cement because this um, lovely Eslon thread is, is a bit slippy and it has a tendency sometimes to let those knots come undone. So just glue that knot there. Um, and once your glue is dry, you can just peel off your masking tape and your lovely tassel will look like this. And you can then just pop it straight onto an ear wire. Hi, Arissa, how are you? Keep, screen keeps jumping in and stopping on YouTube. Hmm, I wonder why. I'll have to have a look at that on the playback and see um, what's going on. I'm hoping that, I'm, I, was, I was hoping I finally had my tech sorted. It might just be my internet connection. 
So now we've done those lovely Turkish blue tassels, what I want to do now is talk to you about this kind of tassel here, which is made, which has got a hole all the way through. And to do that, um, what you're gonna need, 0.6 millimeter wire. Jumping for you too, Nancy. I wonder if it's my internet connection. Um, I hope not, um, but it could well be. So I apologize if it is. I don't think there's much I can do about that at the moment, I'm afraid, um, because we're on the fastest connection possible. Um, but you wanna take a piece of 0.6 wire and you'll round those pliers um, a couple of inches from the end and pop a loop in it using your round nose pliers. Like so. Um, and then just use your chain nose pliers to grip that loop and wrap the end of the wire around. And it will look like that. Let me get that camera to focus in there. And then you can trim off your tail of wire and you're gonna get a nice loop. And this is the loop that you're going to attach your tassel to. So just like with this one here, we attached our tassel to this ring. This time you're gonna attach your tassel to this loop here and make your tassel. And then when you've made it, you're gonna thread it up inside that um, cap and it will come out the top here and then you can add on a crystal and make another loop to attach it to your um, to attach it to your key ring or your bookmark or whatever what gauge it's a 0.6 mil gauge Nancy I'm not sure in American wire gauge what that is but somebody somebody watching will probably have the answer is it 26 or 24 I'm not sure um, 26 or 24 gauge, but it's 0 0.6 mil in thickness. That's what it, that's how it measures. Um, so um, I'm just gonna do the first few of these tassels for you, um, just so I can demo for you the, um, this other sort of technique. And then I will show you guys how to use one of these caps, which doesn't have a hole in it, and which just has a ring already made on the top there. Um, so let me just thread up my needle. So again, I'm using um, Eslon D thread um, because I want it to um, be nice and soft and flexible. I really don't recommend that you use Fireline with a um, tassel because you will just find it will be too stiff. It won't have that movement to it. So I've just threaded up my needle. Once again, I'm gonna take the end of my thread through the loop and just knot it on to that loop that we just made with that wire. And I'm gonna tie a double knot there. Like so. And now I'm ready to thread on my seed beads. And I'm using this lovely Preciosa mix, which is called Candy Apple here, um, which I love because it's so bright and colorful and cheerful and it's I think that's just what we need at the moment, isn't it? A little bit of cheerful colour in all of our lives. And I've used, I've done, I think I've done, I must have done 40, yeah, I've done 40. This is nice and long here. So I'm gonna need to pick up 40 beads now. So that's five, six, you have to talk amongst yourself while I count. Halfway there, that's 20. <laughs> I'm just taking those down there towards my ring. It would make a really nice pendant, um, Donna. Oh, I'll catch you later, Wendy. And um, so that's halfway there, it's 20. There's four more to go. That is 40 beads 
on now and what I'm going to do is go miss out the last bead that I added and then just go back through all 39 of the other beads there. Here we are. So I've gone back through all 39 and now I can just go back through my ring and I'm now ready for another 40 beads. So you keep doing this till you've um until you've sort your tassel is is sort of big and bunchy enough um, and you're happy with the size of it and you want it to fit nicely into this um, into the into your end cap here but with a little bit of movement you don't want to be kind of ramming them in because if you do it's going to look like this here and this is one that went wrong um, where I've just tried to get too much into this small end cap here I've used fire line thread so it's more stiff and it's like a spider it doesn't hang nicely as you can see Whereas this one, it's nice and soft and flexible and moves because it was done with the S Lon D and I haven't tried to cram. So how many have I done in that cap? I've gone two, four, six, eight, ten. So I've got ten strands on that tassel. So when you've got your ten strands on the tassel, what you'll do is you'll go up through the end cap and that pulls everything up inside so that you can't see it anymore you can't see that ring that you made um, and then you can pop on a crystal a pretty crystal to keep it all nice and sparkly and um, make a loop on the top to attach it to your um, finding whatever you want to put it on uh, can you use kumi eslon no i think kumi um Ceylon would be much thicker um so that would be far too thick um so I wouldn't, oh, you need to use Eslon D, which is this one here. It's it's nice and soft and flexible. Um, I think the, the cord that you're thinking about that you use for Kumihimo is, is more like a cord, whereas this is more like a thread. So that's what you need for this. So the last thing I want to show you guys um, is how to use one of these findings here, where you haven't got um, a hole in it, and you're going to have to glue it in to that cap there. So what we're going to do use to get that started is going to be a, um, a, six, a size 6 seed bead. And we're going to use that a little bit like a stopper to, to begin forming our um, tassel, which we can then glue into. Um, so again, I'm just going to take here. Um, and show you guys what I mean. It's horrible threading a needle live. <laughs> the cotton, the, the it's it's Eslon D, it's Eslon D thread heather, and I will to it um in the description of this video when I'm done so you guys can see it. So it's Eslon D. I think some people might call it um, Ceylon, but I don't know. I call it Eslon, Eslon D thread. So I threaded up my needle. I'm gonna take my size six seed bead, thread through that size six seed bead towards my tail of thread, and then go back through it a couple of times, then back through that bead. few times and this last time I'm just going to go back through this loop here to kind of tie a knot pull that tight so that bead now is kind of like a stopper bead and what it's going to mean is I've got a nice base to begin building that tassel off of and it will be um, it will sort of form that base which I can then glue into my end cap here um, so to make the tassel you just do exactly as you did before you just thread on your beads um, as many as you want say um, and we found that you know you want to make these 
have movement then don't make them too short because you have to remember that some of this is going to end up being glued back into that end cap there so make sure that you remember that some of it's going to disappear inside that cap if you make it too short it's not going to look its best so just thread on your beads and i'd say probably about 30 or 40 um, and then go back through miss out the last bead and go back through all of the beads and through that size six seed bead and pull it all tight like so and then what you can do is go back around the seed bead again um, and then um, and then start beading again so you start beading by um, just going you can just go actually just go back through and then just start adding your next tassel on so again going back through and around and around that size six seed bead and then you'll have something that you can begin to glue into the end cap there so to glue in i recommend you use a zap gel yeah it's the same as nymolin um the eslon d is the same as nylon nymo so same thing that was the other name i was thinking of um so um you want to use it into the end there um and I think that is kind of tassel, everything I wanted to show you about making tassels. Um, so if you miss that trick with uh, masking tape um, at the beginning then, and you can watch that on the catch up, but you will find this tip is brilliant for making sure you have nice flexible tassels and that you're not kind of fighting with your thread and your beads to stop it slipping inside. Um, so I am going to just... Um, make myself a bit bigger here so you can see me again and um, pop my earrings back in and say thank you very much for joining me back on our channel and um